16 of Gallon Kitten Knitting. It's been a while. It has been a little bit. <laughs> we're glad to see you, though, we and are. we're glad to be uh, back at it. We are. We're a little bit rusty, so bear with us. Yes. But um, I am Heather. I am your co-hostess, and you can find me on Ravelry, Twitter, and Instagram as at SpaceKitten3000. And I am Chelsea. You can find me as at Galnet's Yarn on Ravelry, I do this every time, <laughs> on Ravelry and Instagram. You can also find me at Galli Alvia on, uh, I was about to say Facebook. You can't find me at all on Facebook anymore. Not um, <laughs> What's the other one? Twitter. Twitter. Galli Alvia. Yeah, see, on I told Twitter. we warned you we would be rusty. <laughs> we were very rusty. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is who we are. Um, it has been, gosh, December since we did any recording, so it's been yeah. a minute since we've done recording. And um, I do apologize. I'm wearing my glasses because my eyes are terrible and you can see the reflection and the you can see the light reflection. And I'm glasses. not wearing my glasses because Sorry. I couldn't find them this morning. I know. Ah. That's what happened. She bought like multiple pairs of glasses. Yeah. And I only have one. And she was like, I can't find my glasses. And the I was like, I want to wear today. If that happened to me, I would literally not be able to do anything. So zenni.com, Z N N I.com, obviously not affiliated. Um, but they have really inexpensive glasses. So I just went ahead and like use my H HSA to like buy a bunch of them. That's what my um, husband's going to do too. Yeah. I didn't know about, like I knew about like Warby Parker and stuff like that, but I had never really thought about it, but I had already bought these glasses, um, before she went and, uh, she's like, Oh, you should totally check out this website. But my husband needs new glasses and that's what he's going to do. So. Yeah. Cause I think these with my insurance were $300 and that's stupid. Well, and whenever I buy, yeah, because my prescription is kind of weird. Um, it typically costs me anywhere between seven and eight hundred dollars yeah. by the time I buy my glasses. So this time I only spent about a hundred dollars a pair and just kind of went crazy. And so sunglasses. That, and sunglasses. Anyway. I bought some really cool purple sunglasses, like purple lenses. And she said that she told me that they look like Elton John uh, sunglasses. I do. I'm channeling my my inner Elton John. No, it looks I totally really cute, though. Hold on, I've got them. <laughs> I got them. So if you're wondering about glasses, this is the glasses podcast apparently right now. Yep. I found them. They Hold look on. really cute though. I found them. Because you guys really wanted to see me in sunglasses today, didn't you? You did. I'm so glad. <laughs> so yeah, totally They're channeling so cute. my inner Elton John. They're really cute. And anyway. they actually look really good with your red hair. They do. Purple and red look really good They together. do. So I think over Christmas, whenever I was doing my little, um, what is that called? Vlogmas? Vlogmas. Yes, thank you. Um, I had dyed my hair back to its natural color. Um, I was going through a phase. I, I had lost my color. <laughs> and I was going through a phase. And here about... Three weeks or so, I was talking to Kit, and I was like, I'm feeling the red. I need well, my color back. And, you know, when I met her, um, she had her natural hair color. Mm -hmm. But when I think of her, I think of her with red hair. It's just, you know, when I think of, when I think of Gal, when I think of Chelsea, I think, like, that's the image that pops into my head is of the red hair. And so when she told me she was thinking about red, I was like, yes, that's my... I mean, she looks good in every hair color, but I really just love the red. Thank you. I have fun with colors, but I've always kind of seen my you, inner self as a like redhead. Do you feel like a redhead? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always have. Um, red was kind of my gateway color. Mm -hmm. Whenever I first started dyeing my hair, alternative colors. I mean, I tried black. Black does not look good on me. Mm -hmm. um, but red, obviously. Well, she had... I, I feel like the first time... It might not have been the first time, but you did kind of the flame thing where flame it was bright. like yellow and mm -hmm. red and orange. Mm -hmm. um, I distinctly remember that mm -hmm. being like, you know. Yeah, I did the, the flame bray mm -hmm. and yeah, no, that was, that was it. But yeah, color is back. I am back. Um, I've kind of not been myself. We can talk about that more later, but I am, I am back and feeling great. great. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we'll be, um, recording more, more frequently on the rig than we have been. Yeah. There's just been a lot of stuff. Um, Which we'll talk about later yeah, in the podcast just, so you, you know, guys can skip it. Life stuff. So, yeah. um, but, um, I've actually been doing a lot of knitting still. She's my and, knitting queen. Uh, I've, been, I'll, I've been doing a lot still. So, um, but, um, 
we're both really um, excited. We have a Fiber Fest, a semi local Fiber Fest coming up um, next month or in a couple weeks, actually. Yeah. So we'll be going to that. Two and... weeks, which we recorded last year from DFW mm-hmm. Fiber Fest, Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Fest in Irving, Texas. Um, this year, it, it's in two weeks from this weekend. So this weekend is the 23rd. I think it's like today. The Today's the 24th. So fourth it's like the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. Yeah. Um, and fortunately for us at the podcaster meetup, the grocery girls are coming down. Yeah. If you guys are familiar with the grocery girls, mm-hmm. um, they're going to be at the Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Fest and we get the opportunity to meet them. So I am super excited because yeah. I follow the grocery girls. I love them. Um, <laughs> you know, I know you guys know this. My husband is from Canada, so I, I tend to be a bit of a, I don't want to say a Canadian fault cause that's not quite right. Um, <laughs> That's not quite right. Yeah, that has um, a different connotation. That has a different connotation, but I do like my Canadian um, compatriots. You want to support Canadian makers. I do. I do want to support yeah. Canadian makers yeah. in addition to my um, other makers, mm-hmm. but I have a special place in my heart for Canadians, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's going to happen here in two weeks. I don't know yet if we're going to record from DFW Fiber Yeah, Fest we haven't really... Decided. Um, we did last year. We recorded from our hotel room and kind of did a haul. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do have friends that live in that area, and so we haven't kind of we haven't um, cemented plans with them yet. Right. Um, so we're not really sure. So if we don't record during. Um, Fiber Fest, it may be like the week after. Yeah. And I'll try to record some footage from Fiber Fest, and it may just be that we don't do a podcast from Fiber Fest, right. but you'll get to see some footage from Fiber Fest. Yeah. And the actual podcast will be recorded um, later. We also have a big trip coming up later this year. Um, the, the four of us, and by that I mean the two of us and our husbands. Um, and so. I don't know that my haul is going to be as much as it was last year, if any at all, um, because a lot of my extra money has been earmarked for other things. Um, so We're going to Walt Disney World for my 40th birthday. So I didn't know if you wanted me to share that or not. <laughs> so I will be 40 in December, but we're going in October because we wanted to be there for Halloween. Yeah. So, so we're taking a big week-long trip to Disney World. So a lot of our... Funds a this lot year of our funds are, are going, going towards to that. our trip. It is so. not an inexpensive trip, but we are going to have so, so much, much fun. fun. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. So much fun. We will probably, I imagine, record some video while we're sure. there too. Mm-hmm. Um, it obviously won't be a knitting podcast. No. But we're just going to have But if you want to see us geek out about Disney stuff, that'll yeah. be fun too. So I'm excited because our plan is, we haven't been able to reserve anything yet, obviously, but our plan mm-hmm. is, um, like we're going to do, this is, this is what my bucket list is. I want to do dinner at Cinderella, Cinderella's Castle, mm-hmm. or at least a meal at Cinderella's Castle, because I am a big Disney princess freak <laughs> and want to meet all the Disney princesses. So yeah. And we're also, um, one of my, we're definitely going to try to make reservations for that. I mean, this is all reservation, but we have all of our reservations planned. But um, I also want to eat at Be Our Guest restaurant. So that will be two of the kind of themed restaurants that we're going to do. So No, and we're going to be there during the Food and Wine Fest at Epcot. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But I'm the only one out of our group that's never been to Disney World. (laughs) So, Uh, it's been a while for everybody. Like, nobody's been recently. No. Um, I've been to Disneyland many times because I'm from California, but I've never been to Disney World. So. And I've been to Disney World once, and that was when I was in college and went with a couple of girlfriends and had a marvelous experience with that. But I haven't been with my husband. I haven't been with my bestie. (laughs) So, this is going to be a beautiful and wonderful trip for us all, and we've been spending the last couple of months planning it and You know, it takes a lot of planning to go to Disney. Oh my gosh, does it take a lot of planning. And that's cut into our yarn spending. It has. And um, when getting together. Yeah, and getting together, we've been doing a lot of uh, Disney-type research and planning and things like that. So um, that's part of just the other stuff that's been going on is planning for that big trip for us uh, in fall. And then um, Fiber Fest might be... Not as big of an acquisition no. list as usual, just because, uh, you know, life, life, money, things like that. Life. But um, I am, uh, as far as DFW 
is concerned, I am going to try to, I do plan on buying some stuff. I'm looking at my Ravelry queue and kind of deciding on a couple of projects that I may want to buy yarn for while I'm there because Miss Babs is going to be there. And I'm I forgot about really, that. really, really excited about that. And there are a couple of sweaters I have in mind that I will want to knit um, for fall and winter. And um, I think she would be great for mm -hmm. sweater quantities worth of yarn. Mm -hmm. And so, I think yeah. the only thing I'm really thinking about getting is I have some Shibu yarn um, mm -hmm. for the Hohi Locatelli Like a Cloud. Um, it's been in my queue since last fall. I know I've talked about it. Um, I still need to get um, a couple of skeins of the lace weight, I believe is what I need. So I'm planning on taking a couple of skeins and rocking with that and See seeing if, if I can it. find it and, and match it. Um, that's really the only thing I'm intending on Well, Poly on Studios. As far as not... Is it Poly Studios with the uh, mugs? Oh yeah, no, yeah. definitely. The, so, aside from yarn, um, aside from that is my yeah. only yarn acquisition. So Polly Studios, P A W L E Y, um, she is a ceramics artist who is also going to be at DFW Fiber Fest. I bought her mug, and of course I don't have it with me, but it's what I drink coffee in in the morning. Um, she has mugs that. Um, have little sayings on them, and she knows her audience. Um, she has, like, her hooker's got a hook for your crocheters. <laughs> um, mine says... I am the god of knits and wine. I am the god of knits and wine, which is a play off of Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that when I bought it because I'm not a Game of Thrones fan. <laughs> um, but I liked the way it. I, I, I you like the it way it sounds. So so you liked the colors. I am the god so. of knits and wine. So here we go. But yes, Polly Studios will be there again, and I follow her on a platform that some of you may know. It's a gaming platform called Twitch. Um, I am a subscriber to her, so she will be there, and I'm super excited to see her, and I need to check with her, but she actually might be there this year mm -hmm. instead of just her husband. Well, and um, last year I was really like, you know when you leave a fiber fest and you're like, I really should have gotten that thing. Yeah. I was really like, oh, I should have gotten one of her mugs. I yeah. really should have. And I know I could have ordered one, but... You know, it's shipping makes same. me feel cheap, and I just, like, was like, well, it's something I can look forward to yeah. um, if she's at Fiberfest again this year. Yeah. So I definitely will want to pick up um, one of her mugs because they have a lot of maker-related sayings, and then they also kind of have fandom sayings and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they kind too. of blend them mm -hmm. all, and, and uh, it's... It's very fun. I really it's like fun. it. And I, and I like to support, you know, artists. Yeah. So, and I love pottery. Um, but typically what happens is um, she stays at home. Amanda is her name. She stays at home and works on the pottery. And her husband's the one that actually goes to the shows mm -hmm. and sells. But this year, like I said, um, I think she's actually going to be at the show this year. Which so. we didn't know all of this last year. No. But I remember her husband being there and yes. saying hi to us and things like that. Yes. Um, but now we, we know. We so. have, I don't want to say an end because we don't know them personally. But, uh, you know, I have talked to her um, through Twitch and everything right. like that. I don't know that Hamster would remember me from Adam. Hamster is her husband. Um, but... You know, we'll see. We'll see what happens, and I'm excited to uh, get a new mug. Yeah, um, and we met a couple of people, or a few people, last year when we were at um, the Fiber Fest just by hanging out in the hotel lobby yes. by the fire and yes. knitting and things like that. And so we are going to be able to see a couple of people that we met yeah. last year that we've already talked to, and we are staying at the same hotel, and we will all be there again. So that'll be really nice because we met some really nice people. We met some really wonderful people, yeah. and they've... Um, they've been really great Instagram buddies throughout and the year. And supportive and encouraging. Very... And it's just been really fun, like, talking to them. Yes. And then we'll kind of get to reunite, um, by getting to know each other over the year on just Instagram where we didn't know each other before yeah. last year. And so, um, like I said, we're all staying at the same hotel we did last year. Mm -hmm. And so we'll get to see some of those people. Mm -hmm. So it'll be really, really nice. I'm really looking forward to it. Our husbands are coming with us. They don't obviously they don't knit. sit there with us and sometimes actually they do. Caleb sat with us um her husband Caleb sat with us uh my husband went upstairs and took a nap 
<laughs> but, but yeah, there's there's a bar right there by the. I remember lobby, uh, Caleb lobby. was hanging out with us, and he was also our wine runner. He was our wine runner. We so just sat there nice. and knit, and and he went and got us more yeah. wine. So, so. Um, yeah, we're we're really looking forward to this trip and um, reuniting with people and meeting new people. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you are a follower of the podcast and haven't met us yet, um, we are staying at the. When is the holiday? Holiday in Las Colinas. Yeah, because there's two. There's two yeah. Holiday Inns. So this is the one a little bit around the circuit. Not the one um, right by. Not the, the one right by center. it. They actually bus us to the convention mm-hmm. center because we're not within walking distance. Um, but say it's it's full of makers, so it's it's a great place to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be there. So and we'll probably be in the lobby most of the time if we're not at the convention center. So. Look for us and come say hi because we'd love to see you guys and yes. and meet you guys and if you know us come up and say hi and we'll give anyway. you a great big hug. We're we'll give you a great big hug. This year we're not participating in the um, stitch marker swap. Um, we did that last year and we had a lot of fun doing it, but this year we're just gonna kind of take it easy and play it by ear and see who we see and and go about our business. Yeah. But anyway, so that is DFW Fiberfest talk. Yes. Let's talk about our finished objects because I have. No knitting finished objects. <laughs> I've had like four months and no finished objects. Um, but we'll talk. We'll start with kittens knitting objects, and then we'll talk about my spinning. I have a lot of finished objects. You do. I did not bring them all with me because some of them I finished quite a while ago, and um, they've been around a little bit. So I just brought my most recent ones. I will mention the ones that I did not bring. I did finish my featherweight cardigan by Hannah Fedig. And I have pictures of that on my Instagram, and I've worn it many times, and I really like it. It looks so cute on her. I really like it, yeah. Yeah. And then I also finished um, Nurtured by Andrea Mowry. Again, there's a picture on my Instagram, and there's also pictures of both on my Ravelry project page, too. Same pictures. Mm-hmm. And it came out really well as uh, as well. And I've worn it many times. Um, but knitting those two things, I realized I was knitting okay I would knit the arms to the required or the suggested lengths and I don't have short arms I actually think I have long arms but after um soaking them and blocking them the arms were getting really long have you seen meet the robinsons no okay (laughs) there there is a there is a t-rex that is on <laughs> Meet the Robinsons, the Disney movie. And the T-Rex gets stuck in a corner trying to get this thing. And he's got these little big <laughs> arms. Well, I always thought I had, like, long alien arms. Like, whenever I see <laughs> pictures of myself with, like, my arms, like, straight down, I think they're really long. Oh, and I think I, I have girl arms, too. But I, I get what you're saying. But, yeah, when you're talking about, I don't have short arms. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I don't have Master, short arms. I've got a big head <laughs> and little arms. Master. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch it. Yeah. I'm going to have to look up a clip now. Yeah. No, you need to watch that movie. That movie's fabulous. But, um, so, on each of the, the Featherweight and the Nurtured car, or nurtured Sweater, I have to roll up the cuffs. Just one time, but they are a tad bit too long. So, this brings me, so, anyway, those are finished. If you want to see them, you can look on Ravelry or my Instagram. So, that brings me to my next finished object, which is another sweater. And it is the, um, I always forget if it's west or east. It's the West End Cardigan, cardigan by Anna Fedig. Hannah Fedig. Hannah, sorry. <laughs> and this is it here. And it's got this pretty cable and this body of seed stitch. And it came out beautifully. Mm-hmm. I really like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a lot of fun knitting this, and I really, really like it. It's like... I feel like it's a really good quality garment. Yeah. You know, like it's it's just what I intended. Yeah. Um and the yarn is just knit picks, wool of the Andes in noble heather is the color. And my husband um got me a sweater's quantity worth as part of my Christmas gift. Oh. So yeah, it's really great. I don't have a picture of me wearing this anywhere. It I fits her so well. Got, I Yeah, she did see me wear it, um, but I really, really like it. Back to the arm length. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to knit these 
sleeves as long as I did the other ones because I don't want to have to roll up the cuffs. I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, just rolling up a cuff, who cares? But I was just like, I'm just not going to, you know, I'm going to do them a little bit shorter so that way I don't have to roll up the cuffs. Now I wish I would have done them a little longer. I don't know. It's probably just me and being like, it's not perfect one way or the other, you know? I don't know. Um... They are a perfect length. I mean, they fit me. They stop right where they They're should. They're tailored. There, there's no gathering, though, whatsoever. Yeah. It's just straight. And mm -hmm. I wish there was a little bit more, like, gathering, but not to where I had to cuff them like I do on the other two sweaters I finished previously. Yeah. But it fits as intended, I think. So, um, but yeah, so this was... Um, this was really good. I really like it. Um, I've gotten to wear it a couple of times. It's starting to get more into spring weather, so I don't know how many more times I'll be able to wear it. It's yeah. like was in the 70s today, so I was glad that I finished it in enough time to wear it a few times mm -hmm. uh, this winter. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, I think it's officially spring here. That, yeah. At least where, where, where yeah. we live. Now, it's kind of funny because when... My husband's um, parents from Canada were in this the weekend, and there was some concern about the way they were going home. And so I was looking at um, states further north, like South Dakota, North Dakota, and they actually have um, cameras on their interstates yeah. that you can look at. And there was like snow on the ground, and I was like, "What? Yeah, it's what is been that? really nice it's, here. It's the trees are blooming yeah. and everything like that here. So it kind of took me aback." Yeah, so we probably won't be getting to wear our knitwear. No. Anytime soon. No. Um, my next uh, project that I finished was the Patiki Cow by Oroho Knits. And this was my first color work. And I was inspired by um, Sandy from By the Lakeside. She did um, this cowl. And she had done color work before, but she's not like a color, like an ex she has more experience than I do in color work, but she's not like color work person. And she thought, she said that this was a really good um, and easy to follow pattern for color work. And so I made it. And I think you can see it best right there. Yeah. And um, it's with DK weight yarn. The kind of grayish black is black truffle um, in the Jasper DK base from Primrose yarn and then this kind of pinky color it's I guess kind of a pinky purple but it's got like yellow and all different colors mm -hmm. um this is the um I think it's Utopia DK from Lambstrings yarn and the colorway the poet which is Edgar Allan Poe and I love it it was um I love the colors first of all mm -hmm. I just think they're they they're really nice but um, this was such a great color work pattern. I keep telling Gal she really needs to do it. So it's in my queue. The only yeah. reason I haven't started it is because it requires DK, DK weight. Yeah. And I'll have to specifically buy that. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying not to buy yarn right now. Yeah. So. But it was, that. I mean, it was so much easier than I thought it was going to be awesome. doing color work. And this was a great color work pattern because you don't have any long floats. So um, the chart was really easy to follow. I actually didn't do all of the rows in the chart because I was afraid I wasn't going to have enough black. And it, I had, of course I didn't gauge it, but I, I had, you know, it only said one skein of each, but I really felt like I might run out of the black so I skipped a, like a repeat of the color work section but I don't I don't care um I've only gotten to wear it like once or twice because it hasn't been that cold but I was just so happy <laughs> I was so happy so that's a great color work pattern I do think I'll wear it it just hasn't been really super cold for me to wear it which brings me to my next color work because now I'm addicted to color work and I'm so thrilled, so thrilled, because I finally did the underwing mitts by Erica Hauser, 
Who's it? Some house or some, who's yeah. it? something like that. Uh, you you guys all know this pattern. It's been everywhere. Yeah. Ever since I started to knit, I wanted to make these because they're very me. And um, I was like, I don't. I'm just not good enough to knit these. Show like the I don't. Side. Oh yeah, this is the back. Kind of has this. The little. Yeah, and the mm -hmm. phases of the moon. The and motif. The, yeah. So um, after I did color work and liked it so much and um, I was like I'm just gonna do this because I won't if I don't try to do it I won't know if I can and um that just didn't make sense to me you know like um I just used and I don't remember what nitpicks did I write it down um no I just used some kind of nitpicks fingering wait I'm sorry I, I'll try to put it in the show notes um, fingering weight, and then for the underwing part, this is kind of yellow, I don't know if you can really tell. Um, it's just some leftover yarn that I had from Suburban Stitcher. But, um, in the Ballard colorway. Um, it was so fun! Oh my gosh, I want to do everything color work. Everything! Everything needs to be color work for She's me addicted. Now. I love it. Uh, these were not hard. You did have to manage long floats. But that's not difficult. Um, they're a little tight. Um, I think I was just uh, probably kind of nervous. So I was holding my yarn a little tighter. But with blocking them and everything, they turned out fine. I, I, I kind of have smaller hands anyway. So um, I did on the second one, my tension loosened up a lot. So when I started doing the second one, I think because I wasn't as nervous about it. I was knitting looser, so I had to intentionally tighten my gauge a little bit because I didn't want to change needle sizes, and it turned out fine. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I can't even, I'm so happy that I did these. <laughs> like, guys, I'm so happy I did these. Like, um, I've not worn them because I finished them not that long ago, and it's just not cold enough. No. But I love them, and I'm so happy that I did them. They turned out so great, and I did the embroidery on the underwing part, which some people hate, but I didn't. I know how to embroider, like on fabric, so it wasn't um, it wasn't difficult for me. I was just like, oh, this is just an embroidery sti stitch, no big deal. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy. And then I only have one other thing that I finished. I did a. I think it's called the Day Beret by Hannah Fettig. I can't really see it. It's just a basic little beret. I did that, and this is out of uh, Magpie Fibers Swanky DK and her Selkie color. I was going to do some arm warmers, but then I just have a lot of those, so I did this hat. And then I got a pom-pom, but I haven't sewn it on yet. Got a pom-pom for it. So it'll be like that. <laughs> It'll be cute. Um, but I, again, I I have not worn this yet, and I probably won't until next fall. But it's DK weight again, and it's got um, the swanky DK from Magpie has cashmere in it, so it's really nice and has a good drape. It's just a basic little hat. So yeah, those are the things that I've done. I've been a busy bee. Three sweaters is pretty good plus some accessories so I'm glad now I just want to do all the color work yeah all the color work yeah. I'm gonna do a color work sweater Oof. Caitlin Hunter looking at you because <laughs> you're watching this <laughs> gonna do a uh, Caitlin Hunter I think I'm gonna do the Ingle sweater um I might buy some Miss Babs yarn for that it's DK weight and um it's not, it does have a color work just on the yoke, but it's not like super crazy because I kind of like a subdued clothing style. I don't do a lot of crazy. Um, so it's just like one color like pattern across the yoke. So that's one of the things I'm thinking about buying yarn for at DFW is the Ingle sweater by Caitlin Hunter. Nice. Nice. So that's what I've been doing. 
Sorry, that was the kitten FO show, apparently. Well, because Gal doesn't really have any of those. <laughs> so, I haven't really been in the mood to knit of late, unfortunately, which is part of why we haven't been podcasting, is I have nothing to show for it. Um, <clears throat> but I have been spinning. Mm -hmm. um, I find spinning very soothing, and I finally got my own wheel here a couple of weeks back. I got a shacked ladybug. Um, which I'm really enjoying working with. Um, I don't know. Oops. Sorry, guys. Um, I don't know if I showed this last time. I don't think you did. It's a two-ply. It's Targi. Um, it is one of the, it is the first thing that I ever finished, um, in terms of plying and everything like that. So it is very much, um, a beginner's yarn. It matches your hair very nicely. I like red. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's it's Targi wool. Um, I was thinking about using it for socks. I think it's probably a little too thick for socks, but eh, I'll see what I end up doing mm -hmm. with it. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with any of... Mitts would be nice. Yeah, too. yeah probably. Um, I know that I said around uh, Christmas time I was getting a 12 Days of Christmas by Leon Alexander, and I was hoping to spin one a day. What I didn't take into consideration was when I spun one a day, I would have to also have time to ply those spinnings as well, those singles. Um, and so I wasn't including that time in this. And so I wasn't able to do my 12 days of Christmas like I wanted to. Um, but I did get started on some of the Leon Alexander. Um, and I, I didn't write down the different blends because He's got Angelina, he's got mm -hmm. Silk, he's got Merino. Um, there's just all sorts of stuff in here. Um, this is four different days of Christmas because I, pl I would spend two, because there were, there were one pound, one pound, one ounce, excuse me, not one pound. Uh, there were one ounce samples basically for each day. And so I would spend um, <clears throat> two ounces onto a bobbin two ounces onto a second bobbin and then ply those two together. And this was the first one that I got done. Um, I did continue on. It is on the other wheel that I get to spin on. Um, so I do have some more spun up. I haven't plied it yet. Um, but this was the, the first Leon Alexander yarn that I spun up. Um, I went ahead. I had a lot left on one of my, or a few of my bobbins, including the, the Targi. Um, and so just out of fun and curiosity. I went ahead and did a three ply as well. And it was a lot of fun to try to do it's a three so ply. It's so cute. I really like the colors in this one remind me kind of of Christmassy like for oh, some yeah? reason. I can see that. Like you should like knit a little Christmas ornament. I don't of even some know sort. like okay, so there is there's only 16 yards in this, so I don't know what I would be able to do with it. But um, as you can see, it's very what I'm looking for. Twisty. It is very twisty. That's I not the word she's looking That's not for. the word I'm looking for, but it kind of is the word I'm looking for. It'll work. Um, it's it's over twisted. Um, I haven't washed it and relaxed it or mm -hmm. anything yet. And that's just because, not not the washing part, but the over twisting is just because I was playing, I was learning. I haven't done a three ply before. Um, this was literally, say, the end of, of bobbins that I was just uh, doing something with and trying to learn on. So that's, that's what that is. It's cute. I like it. But that's my spinning. Um, whips. The only thing I've really been working on, um, I started here, and this kind of goes into acquisitions, I think, too, because I don't know that I've shown this to you guys. I have, forgive me. Yeah, we and we got a lot of stuff, like, for Christmas and stuff, yeah. but we're not really showing that because it's so far past Christmas that, yeah. like, you know. I yeah. think, I, but I did, if I didn't mention, Gal got me the knitter's backpack. <laughs> did we mention that on the last one or not? I, I can't I, remember. I think. I think I had you open something or something. Oh, oh for like Vlogmas. maybe one of your vlogs. But maybe. she did get me the Ritual Dyes Black Knitter's Backpack, yeah. which is amazing. I She's been wanting so it, so I wanted to get her for get it for her. Mm -hmm. um, but I did get Mermania by uh, Lambstrings Yarn. Mm -hmm. Lambstrings Yarn. Mm -hmm. um, I did get her Mermania uh, fingering. I don't remember what the, the space is called. Chalala. 
probably lost off base. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Um, I am working on the Crosshatch by Resonance. Let me see if I can pull it up here for you. And I just it's finished so this pretty. morning. I love it. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, I just finished this morning the actual body of the hat. I am now to the decreases, so I think I've got 30 more rows to do. Mm. Um, so or, it decreases pretty quick then, huh? I mean, this is, you've got this right here, and then this is 32 rows. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a bigger brim than I usually do, so that's probably what I'm thinking. Maybe. Which mm -hmm. I'm still, like, every time I knit a hat, I think it's the perfect hat, and then it's not the perfect hat. Yeah. So I'm still looking for the perfect hat, because I thought the socket hat was my perfect hat. Yeah. And then I thought the debris was my perfect hat. Yeah, on my I hat. wear that sock head hat like crazy. You had somebody ask you to make you one. Uh huh. So uh -huh. I actually, a, a good friend of mine, he is our dungeon master for our Saturday night games. Um, so I don't know if you remember or not, the sock head hat that I made was in Lemonade Yarns Teenage, not Teenage Dream. Rainbow, Rainbow Dream. Dream? Yeah. So when I got you for your birthday last year. Yes. Yeah. So it's pink with rainbow stripe in it. Which I thought it was going to be purple, but it was purple. Yeah, so <laughs> I, um, it is pink, and it actually turned out very darling. I am a little disappointed because my my friend Harrison asked me to make him this hat. Uh, also, the sock head hat, he wants the same yarn, but instead of the pink, he wants black and rainbow. Which they do have, right? Or do they? I don't so know. So he purchased it, because I told him, I oh, said, you I buy the this. yarn. Yeah, I told him, you buy the yarn. Um, I will knit you the hat. Mm -hmm. you're to he's totally knit worthy. I will knit him that hat. I know he'll wear the snot out of it. Yeah. Um, so he buys the yarn and it came in this last week. Was it not black? It's gray. See? Yeah. It's gray. I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm not either, but you know, when I, they say that. I showed her the picture yeah. of what I purchased for her. And it was purple. It was I would pink. not have bought her a, a pink Pink is yarn. not my girl color. Right. Purple I would not have purchased color. that. But it was purple. Yeah. And so when I got the pink, I was like, oh, well, I thought this was going to be purple. And so I was, you know, disappointed. But of course, you know, loved she, it. she loved it. Yeah. It's just I not what I thought. It. And she was... And I ended up telling her, I was like, okay, I thought this was going to be purple. And she's like, well, I do like this, but I was surprised you got me pink. Yeah. Yeah. So that might be. So I was a little something. bummed when I told, yeah. because I was the one that linked that skein of yarn to Harrison saying, look, this is a black one with, mm -hmm. with rainbow stripe. And it is possible to get black on yarn. Why her colors aren't true. I mean, I know it's hard to get true on the internet. I get that. That's why every seller has, um, that little disclaimer right. saying things on here are going right. to look a little bit different. But the fact that hers are so different, I mean, they're different shades altogether. Mm -hmm. It's not black, it's gray. It's not purple, it's pink. Yeah. Um, that's a pretty big disparity. I love Lemonade Shop yarns. You just have to know what you see may not be what you right. get. She's got some great colorways. Yeah. And it wouldn't be something that it's like, it's not that I wouldn't buy from her again. No. It's just that you have to know there is a, maybe a little bit more leeway in the color than yeah. you might normally expect. And if you if you really are truly looking for something that is a certain color, I would just probably send her a message and ask, does it look, this is what I need, is this what it looks like, or do you have something else in your shop that looks like this? Right. Um, because I'm sure she she would be willing to communicate oh, I'm, with you. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, it sounds like I'm casting shade, but I just want to let people know this happened. Right. Um, but yeah, so DFW Fiber Fest, I am planning on working on this hat for Harrison, the uh, sock head hat. That will be a great hat. Oh, yeah. Because it's just knit. Yeah, it's just knitting. So that will be a perfect. If you don't yeah. have a sock, then the sock head hat would be perfect. Yep. I think um, for me, going back to like the perfect hat, I've been making hats with a lot of slouch. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking maybe I need to try a hat with not as much slouch and see if I like that better. I think you should try it. It's not going to, I mean, that's kind of, well, um, the, the designer of the 
underwing mitts also has an it escapes me but the bird hat that i sent you she has a color work hat that's birds i thought about talking about that one because i really and i like can't it. remember what it is we'll link it in the show notes yeah. but it's not a slouchy hat and it's no. color work which i've been loving so I thought about maybe trying that one since yeah. I've enjoyed color work and I'd like to do more color work and then it would also cross off that, you know, maybe try a not so slouchy hat. Yeah. Um, so that might be one that it's, I don't know, it's hard. Like, what do you guys knit when it's warm outside? Like, do you? Yeah. I, you know, it takes a long time to knit a sweater or a cardigan or whatever. So I know that it's not instant gratification, but when I'm, when it's spring and summer, it's like I want to work on things that I might be able to wear sooner than later. So do you guys have, you know, favorite kind of summertime patterns or springtime patterns? Or what do you guys work on when it's warm outside? Do you just go ahead and uh, work on sweaters and shawls and socks mm -hmm. or do you have some kind of go-to spring and summer patterns that you work on because I feel like we kind of went through this last year where we slowed down on our knitting a little bit because when it's warm outside you want to be at the pool or you want to be you know hanging out outside and you're not knitting as much yeah. so I um, I'm kind of going through that right now with whips I'm like I don't know now that it's getting warm I don't know if I want to work on a big wool sweater but it would also be nice to have those done when it's time to yeah. wear them to like have a sweater where you're like yes I worked on this spring and summer it's ready to wear yeah. so I was actually thinking about this earlier today um and talking with my mother-in-law about it um so I actually have some cotton yarn that I bought mm -hmm. last summer, summer before last for a drops pattern. I don't remember the name of it and I was bad. I didn't look it up before we started. Um, but it's for a summer, I don't want to call it a blouse, but it's a, it's not a t-shirt. It's a nice looking shirt. Mm -hmm. Um, nice little camisole or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, but I'm thinking about starting that maybe. Um, I also have a cotton um scarf mm -hmm. that I've been working on since last year which one is that, that three color that oh, yeah that blue purple and green mm -hmm. um that I need to finish too I have been I say not really in the mood to knit and I don't know like all of my whips aren't speaking to me. Mm -hmm. um, the things that I'm kind of interested in working on require buying yarn, and I'm not Which really you're interested not in trying doing to that. do right now. I'm trying not yeah. to do that right now, but I'm also not really interested in buying yarn right now because I have a ton of yarn here at the house that I need to just do something with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I really want to do something with this yarn. Um, by it's sock yarn by Hedgehog, Hedgehog Fibers. I think it's in the Oracle. Yeah, Oracle colorway. Um, I was thinking about using it for that color work, the first one you did. The Patiki. The Patiki. And then you told me, you reminded me, oh, it's a DK weight. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, darn it, that's a fingering weight. I can't do that. And that would look great in that, but I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I also want to, I really want to make the feather weight. Um, also, but you know that Heather was talking about the Hanafetic featherweight. You that's, have yarn for that. That's by um, Hedgehog Fibers, the one that she collaborated with Hedgehog Fibers. That's got the feathery things on it. Oh, because I was thinking you could use that one that you dyed. You have enough to make a. That's feather a worsted. Weight. It is. Yeah, that's a worsted. I thought you dyed fingering for that. Mm -mm. She's got this beautiful yarn. When we did our little dyeing, like our we initial talked about dyeing it. Day. Yeah. And I thought it was fingering because I was mm -hmm. like, you have enough of that. And that would be so pretty. I'll double check it when we're done recording, but I'm fairly certain that that's a worsted weight. And, you know, the other thing about that, yeah, it's a worsted Yeah, it's weight. worsted, but it's so pretty. It I is. love it. But the other thing about that is I have some that are this nice dark color and then I have others that are just bright. 
Um, it, mm-hmm. it is not consistent. It's not a consistent. Oh, well, dialogue. it was the first time. It was the first we time we'd ever died. Yeah. So I, there was a lot of learning, and it was just fun to do. And I made a sweater quantities worth of worsted yarn. I don't know why I did that. Um, but well, again, we were just um, beginning, and yeah. we didn't realize that. I think How difficult the both it was us... to get a a continuous result. Yes, and also what we just prefer. Um, knitting in, I think both of us knit a lot in fingering. Mm, mm-hmm. And at the time, I don't think we knew that yet. Um, no, we were I don't still think we trying did. to find our footing as far as. I have DK weight. I need to dye it up. I told yeah, I told you that about the patiki. I was like, you could dye some patiki. DK. I didn't think I had DK though. Oh. But I just realized some of that that I don't. You have cashmere. Yeah, yeah. I just realized I have DK. I can dye up some DK. I only have like three skeins of it or something well, like that. Well, you only need so one of forgotten. each for this. Yeah. And it, it's a great first time covert pattern. I yeah. can't say that enough. Problem solved. <sighs> right here. You guys see it. So, yeah. We see it as it happens. We see it as it happens. I, Gal had a An moment. epiphany. An epiphany. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... Also in my queue, I have the underwing mitts because I'm a copycat, and she it's does. Not, I'm a copycat. Everybody <laughs> in the world has made those mitts. Yeah, but I think everything you do, I'm like, I want one of those. I want to make the Hannah Fed cardigan. Just, I want to make the underwing. I mitts. just bought my necklace, you guys. Oh. I just pulled it off of myself. Well, you know what? I made this necklace. So. Well, and you know what? I bet we can find somebody to help you put it back together. Yeah, probably in, like, better... Her mother-in-law's My a jeweler. My mother-in-law's a jeweler. She's maker, a metalsmith. And uh, she probably will do it better than I did. Yeah. But anyway, um... Yeah, underwing mitts. I really want to make them. I haven't done color work yet, though, so I want to make the patiki first, which apparently I'm dying something for. Um, <laughs> I think you could do the <laughs> underwing mitts because they're not, um... You know, I work with, I'm just going to put this to the side and not mess with it. Um, not mess with fixing my necklace. Um, I work with DPNs. So I, um, the thing is with the underwing mitts, I think they would be pretty easy with magic loop because. I think so. The front and the back have a different stitch count. So it's not even. So what I did, even though I had four um, needles, two of them were for the front and two of them were for the back. Mm-hmm. So I think that's easily translatable to Magic Loop. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Uh, so I don't think, I think if you wanted to jump right into the underwing mitts, I think you could do that. Um the only thing you have to learn is how to carry your long floats. Which and I that's not oh, think not I could hard. do because oh it's gosh. not hard at all. Well, there is a hat and those mittens that I make, the moonstone mittens, mm-hmm. um, that has a float that yeah. you actually hook in. Um, but I do know how to work with yeah, not color work floats. I know how to work with floats. Right. Though, so I think it's probably a very similar. It's just premise. like if you're gonna like go five or more stitches without using that color, you kind of have to bring it with you, mm-hmm. and it's really easy. Yeah. I mean, I just looked up a YouTube video and I was, I was like, oh, I could probably just have figured that out. YouTube is wonderful. Yeah, it is wonderful. I feel sorry for anybody that <laughs> tried know. to learn this before YouTube. I know. Let me just say, okay, so the, um. The Cassandra Rosardi, this hat over here that the I'm working on. Cross hat chat. Cross hat chat. Mm-hmm. Um, has a couple of stitches, which I won't talk about here because I don't want to reveal anything about right. the pattern. It is a pay for pattern. Um, but it has a couple of stitches that I cannot seem to drill into my mind. Mm-hmm. And every time, because it's got repeating rows, every time I get to those certain repeats where I have to do these stitches, Pearl Soho has a YouTube video that I just have like on quick dial. I'm right. just like, okay, let's look this stitch back up again. Mm-hmm. Here we go. So, and part of it also has to do with, you know, I've been working on the same hat for like the last two months. Well, and if um, you're not continuously doing something, you'll forget. If and that's why. If it's a new technique, yeah. you'll forget. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's exactly um, why. Speaking of techniques, I will mention that I did a three needle bind off for the first time ah. for this cardigan. I did that for um, my pussy hat. You do, um, 
don't know why that made me Google. Sorry. Because I'm a child. Because you're a child. Because I'm seven. Um, but you um, do it for the underarms. And for the underarms, I've previously, not that I have a lot of um, experience with sweaters, but I, um, they were basically like Kitchener or just like, you know, sh -sh -sh, stitch it up. Um, but this one called for a uh, three needle bind off and it was wonderful. Yeah. I want to use three needle bind off for everything that I can. It looks so much nicer. It's so much easier than Kitchener to me. And it looks so Finished. There's no holes in my underarms on my nurtured and my feather weight. I had to work with like gapping holes. This was so perfect. It was so perfect. It looks so good. So Can I just yeah. say I think you now have more sweater experience than I do. Well, because I've made I made the blue one and I made the purple one. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Well, but I've only made successfully three. Like I've made three sweaters That's that I will one more wear. Than I have. Um, and I have found that I do wear my featherweight. That was the first successful sweater I made that I will actually wear. And um, when I wear it, I notice that the armholes are not as tidy as they could be. I probably could have, should have gone up a size in it. Um, that is still something I'm working on is my sizing, um, getting that right. It fits me. It might fit me better if I had went up a size. Um, so of course it's all a learning, you know, you just learn what you like on you, how the fit, you know, you, you learn about ease the more you knit and things yep. like that. It's a learning um, process. The nurtured fits great, but I don't know if I mentioned this previously when I was talking about nurtured, but I started the, you do the sleeves first. I did the sleeves in one size and then decided that I was going to not need that size and need to go down a size. So I went down a size in the body. You connect them kind of at the armpits. So I had to do some math figuring out how many stitches I should have. I'm just depressed she could do that. My <laughs> my uh, <laughs> armhole, my arms were different. Essentially what I ended up doing was when you connected the body to the arms, I just did a decrease until my arms fit the stitch count that it should have been if I had knit it all in one size. See, if you told me I had to do math for anything, I'd be like, <laughs> no, I'll just go up a size everywhere. Yeah, um, I'm really glad I did that because I, I, I think the nurtured fits me very well currently. It looks cute. It would have been darling. too big. Um, the arms are fine. Maybe the length, which I said I had a little bit of, you know, I have to cuff them. I wouldn't have knit the arms as long if I had done the smaller size, but I did it in the bigger size. Um, but, you know, I feel like each time I knit something, um, especially garments, that I learned something. Mm -hmm. And I think that each one I've done... I feel like it's more me. It fits me better or is more my style or something more like that. More tailored Yeah. I love the featherweight. It doesn't fit perfect. I still wear it. If I knit again, would I change it? Yes. Um, the nurtured, again, I know what size I would wear. I would knit the arm shorter. The green cardigan, the uh, western cardigan, I would leave how it was. So. so, I really want you to make the little yellow sweater. By Andrea Mallory. By Andrea Mallory. It's so cute. It's so darling. It's so I could cute. totally, because it's also a crop. Yeah. I could see you wearing it. You would also have something to learn there because it's got buttonholes. Yeah. Um, it's really cute, and I like I like it a lot. But, um, and I know the Nurture is by Andrea Mallory, mm -hmm. but Andrea Mallory patterns intimidate the crap out of me. Really? Well, I can't say anything because I'm still on the sleeve of the nurtured. One I've sleeve. only done nurtured in one of her hats, and both of them were fine. I did them. I did not have a problem with them, except just, you know, on the nurtured choosing my size. But um, 
I don't know. I just feel like her um, patterns are beyond me. But I also yeah. thought color work was beyond me, and it wasn't. So I need to have more faith in my skill, cough, or at cough, least brioche. Cough, cough, I know. brioche. I haven't done. You haven't. Yet. Okay, so I think it's and funny. she has a brioche hat out that I really like that yes. she put out for Edinburgh uh, Yarn Festival, and I really oh, like that. So hat that's too. different than the one that I was working on. Yes, she put. Um, okay. Now I'm afraid I misspoke, and maybe she didn't put out a brioche hat for Edinburgh, but I thought she did. I don't know. You guys will figure it out, I'm sure. But, um... What's the name of that hat? And, of course, my phone is recording currently, so I can't look it up. I have my hat. Har have Harlow. My hat, Harlow hat. The Harlow hat. It's not that one. It's a different one. But, um... Yeah, I, I, haven't, done right. I haven't done brioche yet. You would love it. If you like color work, I, I think, I think I would like somewhat, it. Because there's constantly something that you're changing Different. over. Yeah. And, yeah, I think you'd like it. Um, I think that kind of brings us to the end of our knitting for the most oh, part. Oh, I have a couple whips I didn't talk about. Oops. Rewind. I do have some whips. Works in progress. Here Only two. I um, just kind of like railroaded. She got all the FOs. I know. <laughs> Um, I have been working on a shawl. This is kind of like what I've, this has kind of been like the project I've worked on when I'm not doing color work or a sweater. So I've been working on it for a while, but I don't work on it consistently. But it's the Anissa Wrap by Amba O'Brien. And this is what I have so far. It is a long wrap, so I'm not very far at all. Um, but what I'm using, this beautiful kind of burgundy purple color here, is um, Yarn Carnival and Victorian Velvet. And this is all fingering weight. Um, the blue color, this is like a striped section here. I should actually just show you in the skein. So this is Victorian Velvet. It's a beautiful burgundy kind of purple color. And then the striped section is Trolla La Sock by um, Lambstrings in the um, Relax It's Just Magic colorway. And then I'm finally using Soot by Madeline Tosh that I've had forever. Yeah. So I'm finally using it. So those are the three colors I'm using. And, um,. It's just knitting and purling until you get back to this section and you do a little bit of like kind of this lattice -y stuff. So, um, like I said, this is just something, this doesn't take precedence over other things. Yeah. Like, this is just my backup because I'm not doing a sock. So this is what I'm doing instead. But I, um, it's really lovely and I think it'll be really cozy when it's all done because it's kind of squishy. Mm -hmm. And then, um, actively I've been working on, which I don't have it because it's blocking, um, because you, um, seam it together. So I finished one half of the, I don't think I say it right, but I'm just going to say it, this Jane sweater by Layla Robb. And so I finished the front half and I cast on the back. This is all I have. <laughs> this is all I have currently because I just did it yesterday. Um, and then you seam them and then you pick up stitches for the neckline and then you pick up stitches to do the rest. It's got three quarter length sleeves so you just pick up stitches to do the sleeves. Um, I might try to insert a picture of the blocking. I can probably send Gal does all of our editing so I don't know. We'll see. But anyway. I'm going to be honest. I mean, you made it this far. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, going, I don't know that I want to pull all of these, like, pictures. Uh, not, you don't have to. You guys, yeah. yeah. I, what I'll do is I'll put the, I'll go ahead and up, I'll take a picture of the blocking and I'll put it on my Ravelry. So if you want to see the front. That works. The back is just stockinette. So there's nothing to show for the back. The um, front has a little bit of a lace panel. I'm using um, Quince & Co. Kestrel in the color Ash, which is a brown. And um, it's 100% organic linen. So it'll be a good spring and summer knit. And um, I purchased this for myself for my birthday in December. Yeah. But it was from my husband. 
So basically, I asked my husband, can I order a sweater's quantity worth of this yarn for my birthday? And he said yes. So, um, so I did order eight skeins. It called for seven, but I um, ordered eight. And which I'm glad I ordered eight because after reading, looking at the project pages and what other people had done and reading their notes, um, a lot of people added more to the lace section, which is what I end up doing. So it calls for four, for my size, which I'm knitting the smallest size and it's an oversized um, pullover. Um, it calls for four repeats. I actually did six. So I'm glad I did, um, I am glad I just ordered an extra skein because yeah. then I think that'll make up for uh, that. Because I hadn't intended to do that, but I hadn't ga obviously gauged or anything at that point. So I just ordered an extra skein. I don't gauge on anything. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotten better. No, I did gauge because I have something else to talk about. Oh my gosh, this is the kitten show. It is the kitten show, but I knew it was going to be the kitten show. So I did gauge because, and I don't even know if I, I do have my little gauge swatch. See, I have proof I gauged, and I was not. It was nothing <laughs> close to what I needed. But um, so I bought the um, I wanted to make the Tegna by Caitlin Hunter, and so I bought two skeins of uh, Tra La La Sock by Lambstrings Yarn in. Corazon? Is that how you say it? Corazon? Yeah. And it's pretty. I love Corazon. it. Corazon. Corazon. Yeah. Like part. C -O, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I bought this to make the Tegna. And uh, I did gauge. And this is so small. So much smaller than it should be. So. This did you block it? Yes. This is yeah. blocked. It's supposed to be 4x4. Four four. This is not 4x4. Four four. No. No, no, no. Um, so, uh, I started messing with other needle sizes. I think you start with a size three or something like that. And, uh, so I, I, you know, was messing with, uh, other needles trying to gauge this, but then now that it's getting warmer, this kind of goes into Q. I guess this is a good segue unintentionally. Um, now I kind of want to make something different. Um, so instead of the Tegna, I want to make the Breeze Racerback by Jessie Mae Martinson. Of just Jessie, Jessie Mae Mae design. design. Yeah. Um, so now I'm thinking about maybe making a Racerback tank with these instead of the Tegnet and just waiting um, until later. Cause I just want to wear things, I want to knit things that I will wear sooner than later. Will you wear a wool racer back though? I don't know. I mean, I know I mean, it's, it's like in, wool and nylon. It's but. in fingering weight, so it's not going to be super heavy. And it's, um, the way I would knit it and wear it would be oversized. So I would wear like a bralette. So you would, very much see the bralette in the front and on the sides and in the back. And then it would kind of be a cover up for a bralette. It's not my usual style, but I'm okay with it. I usually would just not wear a bralette around town or anything. Um, I kind of like that idea. And then when reading some of the project pages for the pattern, people were saying like they knit like a closer, like a, tighter fitting one and wore it like a, um, under overalls and stuff, which is really cute. I don't have overalls, but I really want overalls. I do have an overall dress, though. That would be cute. Gal doesn't think it would be cute. No, I think it'd be adorable, actually. I'm just <laughs> sitting here going, how do you not own over? I mean, I don't own overalls because I think they look hideous on me, but I think they'd look adorable on you. I don't have overall pants. Now, in my high school days, I graduated in 1998, so when I was actually in high school, I wore a lot of overalls, like, all the time. That's about the time I had my um, dress, my, my yeah. overall dress, but I also had, like, not hit my, my um, puberty. Oh, <laughs> So it's still like what a little tiny. <laughs> it's still very tiny. Well, last year, remember I bought that little denim overall dress that I wore to SoonerCon uh -huh. last year? I was so oh, excited was so about cute. it because it totally looked 90s. Yeah. Like it totally, totally looked like cute. a 90s dress. 
Um, but I had bought like a little second hand. It was from Forever 21, little like um, denim overall dress, and it was super cute. And so some people were saying they were wearing, like, making one that was fitted and wearing it under, like, overalls or something like that. But I actually think I would like an oversized one with a bralette with, like, leggings or something. And when she was More. talking about not wearing a bralette around town, she, she didn't mean she was going commando. Oh, no, I always wear a bra. I just don't <laughs> just wear a bra ever. Ever. <laughs> it was just kind of funny because you, you said that. I was like, that sounds like she's wearing nothing. <laughs> no, I always wear something. Okay. Unless it's nighttime. TMI. But I, what I meant was I would not usually let my bralette show. Yeah. But I think in this circumstance, it'd be kind of cute. Because they're be. making kind of like cuter bralettes that are like lacy or they have some kind of like, you know, cute thing. And I don't have like huge, I'm not huge in that area. So, <laughs> I am, uh, I can, um, you know, not have tons of support. Now I'm just really embarrassed that I'm sharing all of this with you. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's my plan, <laughs> maybe. No, I actually really like this because you get different viewpoints because we have very different body types. Yes. Yeah. And so... I have to keep that in mind when you're talking about things like the racer back. I think that's going to be absolutely adorable on you. It would look hideous on me, and there is no way I could pull anything like that off. Um, I just am. I don't know. You need to look at the project page pictures for that because there were girls that were that had you know, bigger bosoms, and uh, they were rocking it, so. Well, I think a lot of it goes back to what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, with me being so well endowed, I'm going to start sharing too much with you guys, too. Um, I wear bras all the time, very, um, you know, I wear the Lane Bryant. Like, she supportive. Bras, like, yeah. very supportive bras, so, I mean, like, I've got, you know, mm -hmm. it's got a nice, thick, you know, sturdy, whatever. Right. I mean, they make cute stuff too, but with that being said, I would not feel comfortable in a bralette. Right. It wouldn't, it, it won't give you what you need. I would yeah. not feel comfortable right. in a racer back, um, what is the word then? Like sports bra. Right. It's just not got enough support for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like the way I look in things that don't have support. Sure. Um, so I'll have to take a look at the page and see what other people have come up with. You know, I think if you want to wear it, rock it. You do you. Right. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily for me. I'm willing to look at it. Right. Um, and, and see what ideas are out there. But I, I really like the different dynamic that we have here and the way we can share our different right. um, body types with everybody mm -hmm. and, and the different ways that we're, we're doing things. Um, I do hope to do more garments. Um, I've got to start knitting more and get in the mood. Um, but I do hope to do a little bit more garment knitting just because I do want to explore my body and the way things look on my mm -hmm. body. The problem with that is, and you guys know this, um, it takes money to buy a sweater quantity's worth of yarn, yeah. and particularly when you're a big girl, it takes even more yeah. yarn, yeah. which means more money. Um, so there's a little of that. That might be where you have to go, um, instead of going the indie dye route, go like Knit Picks route, where it's yeah. not acrylic, but it's commercially dyed, so it's a bit more affordable, but you're yes. still getting wool. So when we were talking about DK earlier um, and needing yarn for the Pataki? Patiki? Patiki. I think that's how you say it. Um, it works for me. <laughs> um, I, I actually had been looking at yarn through Knit Picks. The only reason why I hadn't pulled the trigger on that yet was there again. It's not very expensive. I just don't really want to spend money on yarn when I've got yarn. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad I came up with a solution. But <laughs> I, it's kind of funny. You've come towards the dark side and the indie dyer side. Right. Side, indie right. dyer side. I think I am starting to loosen up. Mm-hmm. And be more okay with the commercially available. Well, ones. and I think that has a lot to do with where we are in our knitting. Because yes. I think I've, I've, 
I'm more in tune with what I like yes. and how to know what will fit me yes. and what styles I um, are good for me yes. as far as fit and just my aesthetic. Yes. Um, so I feel more comfortable with spending a little bit more because I'm more confident in my decision. Yes. And I think um, you're... I'm the opposite towards way. that. Yeah, yeah, like you still need to find that. Yes. And that's why I got nitpicks for that cardigan because I was like, oh, I've never done, this is like, you know, it has cabling. It's like a full cardigan. I'm nervous about it. You need, for my size, I think I needed a little over 1,200 uh, yards for it. And so I didn't know as far as my skin skill if I if it was gonna work out as far as the look if it was gonna work out so I'd rather have spent the money on knit picks yarn it's 100% wool and everything I'm not trying to um say that it's any less than an indie dyer it's yeah. just different yeah and so I'm like okay so if I knit this cardigan again or something like that I would feel more confident in spending the money on an indie dyer yarn because I I feel pretty good at that it was gonna work out. I haven't always felt like that. Like I don't wanna, you know, I love indie yarn and it's beautiful and I wanna support indie dyers, but yeah. I'm not always confident in my decision making and my skill to be like, okay, I don't wanna, I don't wanna waste this. And I know you can reuse it for something else, but we all know how it goes when you knit something and it doesn't work out. It's just a bummer. It's a bummer. And, and you don't it's hard always, to rip something out that you've spent right, hours on. Right. It, I, I mean, feel like you need a bit of distance from it. So I think once you decide, like once you get a feel for what you like yeah. on you and the sizing of it, that it will be easier to go ahead and pull the trigger on that yarn and be right. like, I'm I, I gonna think you're this. absolutely right. So. Um, yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. There's there's a couple of things that are going on with me and my knitting confidence level with my, you know, I, I feel confident when I'm doing things that don't require, you know, don't require gauging, basically. Um, I still gauge just just because that's what you do. Um, what? <laughs> that's what I do. I'm trying, but yeah. I don't know if it was the... I don't know if it was the way that that um, long weekend cardigan fit me because mm. it doesn't fit me very well. It's like a freaking house coat. Um, but again, like we said before, that was one of the first projects. It was you one of the did. first projects that you I did. You didn't understand ease. No. You didn't understand, you know, there's a gauge lot almost. That goes there were so that. many variables for beginning that you um, just didn't have experience yes. in to know whether it was going to fit you or not, yes. and. You know, I my Hannah Fettig is a. If we're real, the featherweight card, cardigan is probably a size too small. I think it looks darling on you. It is cute. It's not the way. Like if I was if I tried on that one and then the size up, I would get the size up. Yeah. You know, yep. they whether it it can fit on your body, but whether the, or not you like the way it looks, even though it fits, mm -hmm. is different. So. But let's have some real talk here. Real talk. Real talk. So I think the other thing that's going on with me is I'm a little gun shy on garments because, um, as you guys know, I think I've shared this with you before. I'm on, um, antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications and mood stabilizers. Um, when I started going on medication for, let's just call it my mood disorders, um, I gained a lot of weight. Um, I gained probably 30 to 40 pounds. Um, I am having difficulty kind of controlling my weight right now. Um, it's pretty balanced, but there's always that fear that I'm going to gain more weight and that I won't be able to fit into these things that I spent tons of money on, tons of time on. And so I think I'm a little gun shy just because, you know, if I, if I, 
you know, I cleaned out, I, it was great. I cleaned out my closet and um, put everything that I can't wear that's too small for me out in storage and kind of went, you know, with the caveat of as I work out, I'm going to go down in sizes and I'm going to pull things back out. Mm -hmm. That's another story in and of itself. That felt great, but there's still this concern that I'm going to continue gaining weight. Um, so I just, I, I don't want to pull the trigger is a lot of it. Well, and I, you know, I... I get what you're saying, and, like, maybe pullovers aren't the way to go. Maybe no. cardigans are the way to go because, um, yeah, you do have some leeway because of the ease. So, your pullovers are less forgiving, obviously. Yeah. But and if you do. That's what I'm working on right now is <laughs> it, a pullover. Which one are you working on? Nurtured? Nurtured. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or at least I've got the sleeve. Right. <laughs> I've um, got a sleeve. But cardigans, you know, like you can have a cardigan that's like this much ease or you can have yeah. a cardigan that's like this much ease, yeah. you know. So, and it'll look good either way. That's it'll just point. look different. So maybe that's something now that um, even though the long cardigan Long, long weekend, long weekend card cardigan was too big. You do have a better understanding of these now. I definitely than you, do. You do. So maybe make a cardigan. Um, and I don't. I think that um, I understand your concerns and everything, but I don't think that I should let that affect me the way no. I am. Yeah. But I understand that you know you don't have control over that, yeah. but. But it might be something that you can still work on and feel good about yeah. and that you don't have to worry about it not Y'all fitting gonna, you. Like, cry. <laughs> cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm good. But it's something that you can wear. Like, you know, I've, you know, I've gained 10 pounds here and there and mm -hmm. things like that. And, you know, the pants that I wear don't always fit me the way they did, you know, a year ago sure. or whatever. Um but if you gain a few inches in your, because really what you're worried about in a cardigan case is your bust. Is this, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I don't like, like, I don't want my cardigans to, like, touch, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, so, so if there's, you know, two inches of ease or four inches of ease, that's okay. Yeah. It doesn't, like, that, I'll still wear it and it'll still look cute or whatever. Sure. I might have to change the kind of undershirt I wear depending on how I'm feeling, but they'll still fit, and I'll still wear them. Yeah. So that might be something that you no, that's decide a really to do. Great way to look and at it. And you could do the um, the feather weight because it's. Um, do you have any fingering weight that you could dye, or did you dye all your fingering? No, weight? I've got fingering weight. I could dye. Yeah. Um, the problem is, is I'm really wanting to do the feathery feathery fingering weight. That is really cute. Yeah, I really want to do that. So and 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 that gives me a little bit of a not copycat. There is no copycat in knitting. Everything that we knit, <laughs> millions of people have knit. Thousands of people have knit, too. I know, but I swear it's like a, a girl's best friend. I'm still working on a girl's best friend. It doesn't nurtured. even I'm still matter. On I nurtured. so don't care about that I kind of stuff. I know you don't. Because we don't. don't even knit in the same colors. And even if we did, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. But I did tease Rationally, her. Rationally, I know this. I did tease her rational. telling her that she's like coming in on my goth aesthetic here with the red black hair and the black cardigan. Okay, so I was like, now we look like we hang out at the same club. On that so note, I don't even know like what to okay, do. Okay, so I've totally been um, channeling my inner inner 90s like Shirley Manson, which is the lead singer for Garbage. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys remember her or not. I bought these beautiful like they're so cute Dog Martens. And the fun thing about these, you guys. My feet are so small. They're the kid's size. So I went to the mall the other day. I've been asking my husband. This is a long story in and of itself. I'm not going to tell the whole thing. But I've, I've been asking my husband for the last, like, week and a half if I can have these shoes. He finally... She texted me pictures of them, too. Yeah. He finally... I've been sending everybody pictures of these shoes. Um, he's He finally acquiesced and said I could get the shoes. I went to try them on at Journeys. In the adult section, on, on the adult Journeys... The size 7 was too big. So I was like, hold on to them because I'm going to buy them if the kids don't fit. I am mm. I am buying these shoes regardless. Um, so I went to the, next door to the Journey's Kids and I ended up in a size 3 kids. <laughs> Which, okay, just makes me mad because I have big feet. <laughs> and uh, 
she, her and another one of our friends both have smaller feet than I do. Yeah. And they both have two, like, she has those iridescent ones, and then my our friend Sarah has a glittery blue Doc Martens. Mm -hmm. And they both can get them in kid sizes. Yeah. So get this. So, so I, this stepsister here with these Cinderella's cannot wear. She got the big feet. <laughs> I got the big feet. She got the big feet. And they do not make, like, I was surprised they made the iridescent ones in uh, kid a, sizes. Or, I adult mean, adult sizes. sizes yeah. Because I looked for the uh, blue ones, and they did not make them in adult sizes that I could find online. Yeah. And my, I mean, I don't have huge feet. I wear a size 8 to 8.5, but that doesn't go down. Like, there's not a kid equivalent to that. It's always women's sizes. I bet if you wanted to, if I could fit in a size 3, you could fit in a size 6, which is a kid. I don't know. You should try it. Anyway, mm -hmm. so with the money that I saved on buying kids' shoes, which was about 30 bucks, mm -hmm. I bought a backpack so for Fiber Fest so mm -hmm. I can put my yarn in it and walk The yarn her. you're not going to buy? The yarn that I'm not going to buy. The no, fiber the, she's not going to buy? The fiber I'm not going to buy. No, but there's always stuff that you get there, like freebies and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm so just joking. I know you are. But get this. So, on that note... I went to the, you know, the major, main journeys, and I saw this backpack, and I asked them, how much is it? It's 50 bucks. I went next door, they had the same backpack. It was on sale for 30. Was it at the kids' place? It was at the kids' store. Oh my gosh. So, it was at the kids' store. But, something we didn't mention, and this is just, you know, going back to, like, Fiber Fest yeah. and Disney Vacation and all that, we're also both getting tattoos in April. In the so, same place. In the same place. We're not getting like matching tattoos no, we're or not. anything. It just happens to be in the same place. Yeah. But that's also something that um, our money is going towards. Yeah. So Fiber Fest is at the beginning of April. Gal is getting her tattoo. April middle, 19th. Yeah. And then I'm getting mine on the 30th. Yeah. So uh, that's also something that our money is going towards. Yeah. So I'm sure you're going to see a podcast in the future where we're both like. What? So, um, anyway, so that's another, like, thing. So, I know this podcast has run long. It yes. is an hour and 20 minutes as of right now. I still have more to talk to you about. I don't know if Heather still has more to talk to you about. I don't think I do. Um, but I I'm smell going the to... spaghetti that her husband's cooking, though. I can't it smell it. I am I going to pause it here for a moment, good. and either Kitten will be with me or she won't be with me, but I'm coming back with more wine, <laughs> and I'm going to talk to you about what's been going on the last few months. If you want to, you can stop here, and you won't miss anything, because obviously we've talked about it beforehand, but if you want to kind of catch up with me and know what's been going on um, and why we haven't really been podcasting... There's talk about a puppy. There's talk about a puppy and his illnesses mm. but he that. okay, he okay it, it ends up good but sad it was very bit. sad yeah so anyway if you guys uh, want to hear more stay right here i'll be right back i'll try to keep it short um and i may uno. or may not be uno but momento. if i am not bye-bye i'll see you later uno momento mm -hmm.